Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. start this lecture with a thought process from Mahatma Gandhi who says the earth, the air, the land and the water are not an inheritance from our forefathers but unloaned from our children. So, we have to hand over to them at least as it was handed over to us. <coughs> so, if you look at this a very profound statement and uh, this is related to uh, the environment consciousness which is uh, really very important for developing any technology and also using those technologies. And uh, if you look at our ancient Indian technology, they always were conscious about environment and that we will see today, we will be discussing about basically environmental consciousness in ancient India. And what do we mean by environment that we will see, but in this lecture we will be looking at why do we need to be back to this ancient era that I had already discussed in lecture 1 and the lecture 2 to larger extent, because with the blatant misuse of the modern powerful technologies uh, by the greedy people. Uh, we have spoiled the earth and which is uh, quite uh, difficult for us to survive in long run. And uh, therefore, we need to look at basically the environment consciousness, how we can adopt it in the modern time while developing our technology and also using them. And what we will see that how were ancient Indian concerned about environment and did they have developed a lifestyle which was in rhythm with the mother nature? Does the idea of environment consciousness have its roots in ancient India? What can we learn from the environmental wisdom of ancient Indians that we will see at the end of this lecture. So, uh, what do you mean by environment? Environment, if you look at in Hindi, we call it Pariyavaran. Its meaning is basically Pariyavaran. Avaran means a basically enclose, right? And then it will be cover. That also protect the human being, animals, other things, and also sustain us. So environment is very important for us. If you look at environment, can be uh, basically divided into three. Uh, kind in the modern terminology, one is abiotic, biotic and human society. So, abiotic means mountain, rivers, lakes, springs, sea, land, mines, any other whatever the things are having no life that we call abiotic, those are also very important. As they do not have life that does not mean that we will destroy them at our will without really understanding their uh, presence on this beautiful earth. So, biotic like animals, plants, insects and other living beings, if you look at according to our scriptures, there are 80,000 crores of uh, jonies means you know living beings are there. Of course, the modern science may not believe, but it is also a huge number. And all are having right to live in this beautiful earth. And that has been recognized by our ancestor as you go along we will see and the human being is the one of the unique creature of the entire creation. Because the human being control every all the other things is having capability to do that, that we have already seen. Therefore, it is very important for them to be conscious about environment and there is a great relations between this abiotic and biotic, so that they can work unison without really spoiling it for the any benefits. So, 
If you look at this abiotic environment, as I told earlier, consists of mountains, rivers, lakes, land, sea and other physical geographical features found in this uh, blue planet. And uh, in our scriptures, we have repeatedly discussed about the divinity of all these physical features which are uh, basically being expressed in large number of artistic expressions found in the praise of uh, relative scriptures like Vedas, Puranas and lot of other literary works that we could see. And uh, one of the important uh, scripture which is basically the Arthasastra of Chanakya uh, which has dealt with the issues related to protection of these resources and what are the laws and policies he has spelled out and which are also relevant even today. Arthas has a much objective in his approach to the environment issue than the other literatures which are uh, talking about you know praising them and then how it is important they have talked. But this is more practical and which we will be discussing in the next lecture little bit more and I will be also trying to uh, give you some of the uh, tenets from the Arthasastra today's lecture also. So, uh, let us look at uh, from the Rig Veda which says uh, about uh, abiotic environment. He says, I invoke the vast and beautiful day and night, heaven and earth, Mitra and Baduna, with Aryaman, Indra, the Madhutas, the mountains, the waters, the Adityas, heaven and earth on the whole. That means, this is the prayer which is being talked about. It is not that only the earth, even like air, water, Varuna means basically god of water and heavens, Aditya means Suryas, right, sun. So, therefore, it is all combination which are very considered to be divine in nature. So, that has been uh, coming from the basically Vedic era. And uh, if you look at Arthasastra, it says the about land. Land is regarded as an important resource and a list of do's and do not have been prescribed uh, regarding its management in uh, Arthasastras. If you look at today, uh, the, you will find land grabbers, they are just grabbing the land, uh, particularly in India where the land is a very scared commodity, like it is uh, a sought after. Earlier days, the land is divided into various categories, like uh, uh, particularly in rural areas, where the land will be meant for pasture, land is meant for uh, having water bodies and land is also for uh, cultivation and land for uh, jungles or the forest, but today all have gone. It is uh, today we are talking about land for industries only. So, industry is not bad, but that has to be a minuscule uh, area which will be restricted and then not that all the land will be given. The ideal Janapada according to Arthasastra is the one devoid of mud, stones, sultry ground, uneven land, ended with agricultural lands and protected pastures with the farmers devoted to work. But if you look at today, Janapada are devoid of pastures and devoid of agricultural land. That is the irony of modern day. So, we need to go back and then find out how we can protect the land and how we will use them so that environment will be protected. So, that is a very important aspect what we can learn from Arthasastra. And uh, if you look at farmland and mining land, of course, uh, today a lot of minings are going on, so also industrialization industrialization per se is not uh, really bad, but the way we are doing uh, without really uh, understanding is really uh, quite damaging our environment. So, according to Arthasastra, cultivable land is better than mines, because the mines fill only treasury, while agricultural production fills both the treasury and storehouses. Therefore, our land is, our country is always an agricultural land and we always go for the agriculture because that is very important. Even our scripture says Annad Bhavati Bhutani means the, the living things you cannot have without food, food is very essential and so also the 
protect the environment in the process. So, it is also give importance preferences to the uh, greenery system that is very important. Let us look at uh, the Vedas, Vedas is the one of the oldest scriptures which goes back to something 1500 to 500 BC according to historians, but I personally feel that it may be much older that that is the common belief among Indians. And uh, Vedas are some of the oldest characteristics available in humanity and Vedas also contain hymns in praise of different physical features. For example, I have taken one this uh, slokas which I encounter when I was doing the uh, performing the ritual when my father died uh, recently. I got uh, very much attracted with this, I will be trying to recite it, it may not be in the right perspective, but however, it is a great um, sloka what you can think of. Madhuvata rutayate madhu kharanti sindhava madhvi na santu osadi madhu nakta uta ushasa madhu mat parthivan raja madhu dayo astuna pita madhu man na banaspati madhu man astu shurya madhvi gava bhavantuna. If you look at its meaning basically environment provides bliss to people leading their life perfectly. Rivers bless us with the sacred water and provides us health, night, morning, vegetation. Sun bless us with peaceful life or cows provide us milk. So, everywhere you will find that madhu means basically it is the honey, that means it is the sweetness around the everywhere in the environment. When you think about this thing and feel that what a great statement about and we need to keep this legacy while interacting, while undertaking any enterprise even including the technologies. So, that is the important which was being followed in ancient India not damaging the environment, but you will have to use it to some extent. The way the honeybees takes out the uh, honey from the flower without really affecting its uh, own identity. But what we are doing? We are just sucking the resources of mother earth and spoiling it to the point of no return. So, therefore, we need to relook at it and taking the inspiration from these slokas. And uh, if you look at uh, the Prithi Sukta Veda indicates environmental consciousness of Vedic spheres and he has glorified the uh, mother earth uh, and it is being talked about mata bhumi putraham prithibhyam, mata bhumi putraham prithibhyam, I am the son of this mother earth. So, that is the kind of um, feeling what uh, ancient seers were having and we should feel proud that earth is our mother. So, that way we should look at it and the mother earth is called Basuda because for containing all the wealth and Hiran Bhaksha for having gold bosom and Jagato Niveshani for being abode of whole world. If you look at the mother earth represent the whole world, that means it indicates our seers are the uh, people who were written this Vedas, they were knowing that only living beings are on this beautiful earth which can conceive the whole cosmos, the whole world. So, that was the thing what I can interpret from this and uh, mother earth is not for different races of man alone, but for other creatures also. This is a very important statement what our Vedas has talked about it. That means, we should not think that man will uh, rule over the, on this earth, rather man should be the protector of all the living and non-living animals living beings in this beautiful planet because being advanced in among all animals. So, therefore, this is a great statement what has been uh, talked about in Vedas and mother earth is called Bisambara because she is representative of the universe. See because that is also again uh, says that it is the uh, living things where there on this beautiful earth maybe it is the only planet where the living beings. Uh, are still today and it was also at that time. 
and till now of course, uh, people could not find any living uh, organism on any other uh, planets or any other place in the entire cosmos. So, this idea can be looked at it and Vedic sages also know that mountains cause rains and fresh air also provide medicine. Parvati Eshu Vesajam that is being talked about in Rig Veda. And there is a beautiful things in some other scriptures known as Devi Kavach and Javatishtati Bhu Mandalam Dhatra Sasale Banakanana Tavatishtati Mediniyam Santati Putra Pautriki. What this sloka or the says that as long as you are taking care of the sasaila means big ranges of mountains and bana means forest and also the gardens taptak that means till that this mediniyam like means this mother earth will be taking care of not only ourselves, but our next generation. What a beautiful statement it is and what we are doing in the name of development, we are spoiling the forest. I will be talking about when we started spoiling forest, maybe a uh, little in the next lecture, I will be giving some data and also uh, in the name of development, we are just uh, disseminating the mountain ranges. I have seen in my own eyes during my own life, people are making big buildings, concrete jungles, taking uh, mountains and disseminating the mountains, spoiling the baking the mountains, mountains are disappeared from that place. You cannot have develop a mountain, can any scientist or engineer can say that I can have, I can make a mountain, because you do not know where to place the mountain. There is a tectonic place movement and there is a things and you cannot really do that and if you do it will be disastrous. So, therefore, it is being talked about by our ancestor not to uh, destroy these things rather take care of it because these are the life givers and it protects the life. So, that is the important thing which we should learn from that not that swayed by the tsunami of the development what people are talking about, rather we should go for a development of both uh, physical, mental, spiritual and uh, economical and social together there is a holistic way of development we should think about not the development what is being orchestrated by this greedy market forces and we are a uh, slave to them. Therefore, they gave importance to save mountain and said that it is better to live in the forest or mountains than in the villages, forget about cities. Even our CS have tell that you should live in village, you should not, you may not live in the village, but you should rather live in forest or you should live in mountains. Unfortunately, our Adivasis who are the owners of the forest, they are being driven out by this stupid rules and regulation made by Britishers and our, our next generation rules, rulers. So, that is quite uh, atrocious thing on them. And uh, let me talk about abiotic environment, which has been talked about Athar Veda. Yad antarikyang prithivi muta dhang yat matarang pitarang va jinghi sim ayang tasmat gaya partyo na agni rudina yati sukutasya lokam and other slokas. If you look at the meaning, is basically uh, if we have injured space the earth or heaven or if we have offended mother or father, may the revered fire lead us from that to the world of their perfectly restored state. But today, if you look at, we are not really offending the our father, mother, we do uh, my, you know, like this generation kids are doing too much according to me, uh, what I have seen and uh, because they are educated enough to offend their father and mother, which are being prohibited in our scriptures. They are saying not offending the earth or heaven or the space, injuring the space. So, that is being prohibited and may mother earth, Aditi, our birthplace, brother atmosphere save us from the implication, from implication may 
our father heaven be well to us from the paternal guilt having gone to my relatives let me not fall down from their wall so if you look at mother earth is being talked about it's talked about aditi our bath place atmosphere is basically our brother and father is heaven you know if you look at the way it is being described is really very great that means the mother earth is our mother so that is a very important thing so therefore we should not go against the mother nature we are a part of it we are being basically generated from the womb of mother so therefore we need to have a, a very platonic relationship with the mother so if you look at the meaning of last verse is basically is to wish for a clean and unpolluted earth that what we need today can we really make efforts to clean and save this earth from the destruction and this destruction is basically man made because of industrialization because of this greed for the uh, physical developments and what people are talking about and the environment to which no harm or injury should be made so therefore we need to protect the earth that is very important and sages warn us against the paternal guilt which may result because of injury to the environment which protect us which support us so we cannot really be a like uh, that whatever is support we will destroy it. that means we are so much so stupid people that we are doing this kind of thing so therefore we need to take care of it and uh, if you look at our scriptures like vedas ramayan upanishads bhagavad gita mahabharat puranas and smritis contain earliest messages for preservation of environment and ecological balance it's not that we will not use the resources of mother earth but we should use it sparingly not like a demon who, without understanding will consume and spoil everything mother nature has never been considered a hostile element to be conquered or dominated but unfortunately the objective of modern science and technology is to win over the nature which is fundamentally wrong so therefore we need to change this mindset we are a part of nature and which is being talked about by our scripture the man is taught to live in a harmony with nature and recognize that divinity prevails in all elements including plants and animals so this is a great things what we should imbibe and live a life for that so that is very important what we need to educate the people and that's why i took this opportunity to at least discuss about it and we should feel proud that our ancestors had talked about it and chided us not to indulge in such kind of things which will damage the environment and the biotic environment we will be discussing now this is basically consists of vegetation of animal life all the living uh, entities are come under this biotic environment and their protection and sustainable uses are Im very important for human society to prosper because all are connected our scripture says sarva bhutas tamatmanam sarva bhutani chatmani ikhyate joko yuktatma sarvatta samadarshana that means we are all are connected so all are in the part of the brahman in a god in english right so therefore all are manifestation of the god therefore we should not injure anybody right so that is a very important aspect but however we need to use some of them for our things or without spoiling their entirety so in ancient india must race was given to protect forest wild animals aquatic life also the domesticated animals in this regard chanakya's arthashastra has given a lot of guidelines in the next lecture some of them and sometimes i'll be also mentioning it sparingly so if you look at oursing of trees is as old as our civilization rather it is much older than indian civilization as the tree was the first object to be worship not only in india but other countries as well unfortunately they have forgotten that but we have as a living civilization we have inherited and kept intact till today 
unfortunately because of this modern education some of the people uh, are considering the worshiping of trees are uh, superstitious thing which is really atrocious to think about it. and therefore if you look at like uh, it is having a glorious history even like uh, there is a lot of evidences in the literature and also the uh, archaeological excavation and uh, what I learned that a seal discovered at Mahanjodara which is around 4000 to uh, 3000 BC depicts the Aswastha uh, which you call it people all in uh, this uh, botanical name is Ficus religiosa a tree being worshipped right even today and uh, today morning even I saw that uh, people are worshipping a Aswastha tree in the morning you know they give waters and uh, other flowers also. Most gods and goddess in India are associated with some tree, shrubs or creep, creepers and uh, similarly all nine planets which are believed to control the destiny of humanity according to the astrology what uh, some of us uh, might be believing are associated with plants. See look at how they have connected. So, the worship of trees in India is understandably as the trees are not only provide shade in the hot scorching summers, food and medicine and fuel, but also the forest. Forest means there will be rain uh, as I told Annad Bhavati Bhutani Prajyanath Annashambhav that means the food you will get from the rain and which was essentially purely agricultural economy and agriculture is the only primary wealth of a man can have. Rest of the things are secondary, but unfortunately today people are giving more importance to the secondary wealth than that of the primary wealth. So, it is a very unfortunate uh, present moment, but however, we need to go back to the our past and uh, so that we can revive this thing. And the trees being beneficial to humanity to protect them and become a religion for man and the trees were converted into abode of spirits and uh, Banadevatas. I will be talking about how this being considered the forest was considered also as a god. And beside this I will be also discussing uh, later on that uh, how these trees are connected you know with various gods and goddesses form. So, that people will believe and then they will protect it they will not spoil it. If you look at uh, Rig Veda consider the cosmos as a thousand branch tree which is being described from the even Athar Veda, Rig Veda even it has come down to the Bhagavad Gita which uh, talks about the upside down of uh, uh, holy Aswatha or the people tree as a cosmos in the entire it represents. And uh, it is not only that uh, only the Veda if you look at in Buddhist also uh, Aswatha tree was considered to be very pious because of fact that the Lord Buddha got the uh, enlightenment while sitting on the, the tree of Aswatha. So, therefore, it is important. Beside this Mahabharata consider that one can worship the universe by worshiping the holy Aswatha tree. So, if you look at all these scriptures that we are not studying, but they are having a great messages which are today missing among the mass of the our country due to the modern education and due to the we are deviating from the uh, life pattern what our ancestors had given and lived. So, if you look at it is not only about trees, but even like about the animals uh, people have talked about Hindu mythology believes in Dasavataras right and uh, some people Dasavatara also considered as a evolution theory kind of thing how this is evolved the world uh, things being evolved. And uh, first is if you look at it has been uh, codified in a temple like Gopapura. Uh, temple Gopapuram of Dasavatara and Udupi and which is around maybe something 700 800 AD it was built. And this first to feel like first is Mascha, Mascha is basically fish, Kurma is tortoise and Baraha is uh, boar and the Narshima is a half uh, man and half lion. And this signifies the divine form such animal that thereby making their life secure and which has been part of the temple Gopapuram. So, that it will be conveyed to the mass that they will be feel that all are part of sacred and then they will take care of all the beings not that destroy them. So, that is a very important concept if you look at 
it is the uh, part of our life that is uh, being that uh, being uh, designed and developed by the sociologists at that time they are very great when i think about that that is if you look at a man may be taken birth in town or village or in whatever you call janpadas but whatever and when they want to study and then uh, uh, lead a life of a brahmacharya brahmacharya is basically so that uh, they will be educated to control the gyanendriyas and karmendriyas and they means you know senses sense organs which is very important that is the student life you can consider and they will have to go to forest i have shown here they will have to go to a forest and says so that they will live there in herds and then uh, have a good education we are having gurukul systems unfortunately it is one of the best system of education according to me but that is not there today and where people will be living with the houses of the gurus not like hostels and they can do rakas in there and then these people again will be when their education uh, is uh, maybe over then they will return back to the town and village where they will be fulfilling their desires and uh, contribute for the society and then they will live in the town or village and later on they will be at the maybe age of 50 so they will go back again to forest to serve the people and get detached from the life from the day to day affairs of the life and so that uh, they will serve the gurukuls and then students and other people there and then take a inward journey and then again they will stay back and renounce if you look at this is the beautiful system uh, of the Uh, ashram system which was being devised by our ancestors and uh, re- if you look at uh, the three fourth of the entire life if you consider 100 years as a span of human life 25 25 25 each but this is not where digitally being followed that way but however if you consider three fourth of life is being spent in the forest that means they should take care of forest there is no need to protect you know by the these forest guards so this is not the system what we have uh, taken from the western countries and then there is a lot of problems and of course some of these uh, banavasis you know other they were living there also so therefore we are a part and parcel of the forest life it's not that we'll have to create forest and uh, if you look at ancient literature and environment uh, like Uh, the ramayan mahabharat described the importance of forest river mountains and landscape and kalidas has described the beauty of ashrams mountain ranges fountains and so on and it is uh, there will be a lot of scripture i am just mentioning some of them like sangam poets of tamil nadu and then southern part of the, our country also use uh, hills forest river sea etc as a similitude in their poets uh, poems and panchatantra stories are based on animal character which are really very good for the for kids to develop develop a sense for the ethics and uh, if you look at uh, there are several puranas the total 18 puranas are there but i will be not talking about it, but i am just uh, just give you uh, glimpses of it or maybe eyes of tip of iceberg that is bara purana state that Uh, about environment that he never goes to hell who plants an aswastha or a pichumarda that is a neem and or a banyan or a ten jasmines two pomegranates or five mangoes these are the tree which are very important for our life and it is having a lot of ayurvedic medicinal values so it has to be planted and skanda purana says that bilva trees should be planted at the center four other bilva trees on its four sides in the four corners of four banyan trees and 25 asoka trees in a circle and a mairo balan uh, tree which is known as aula on one side also should be grown i don't know why they have made so elaborate thing one has to find it out and do some research to why they have talked about see each statement of these things should not be taken dogmatically but rather it should be interpreted scientifically and uh, let us look at uh, it is not only the is a part of the scripture it was also being declared or propagated through the temples also the temple was the learning center uh, where the mass of the people will be 
being educated or were being educated earlier time. If you look at the sacred uh, groups of Manarasla, see Nagara's temple in Kerala, where the snake cobra is being worshipped and also uh, in the stone form or the statue form and the sacred groups where the trees and plants grow wild and undisturbed, these are the banners which are there. And it is in each village in earlier days, the sacred groups locally known as various names like in Tamil Nadu, the sacred groups locally known as Kovil Kadugal and uh, this Kavu in Kerala, Daivabana in Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, Devabana in Odisha, Devuri in Maharashtra, each village was having uh, a sacred groups where the trees and other things being, uh, being planted and also being uh, protected and people were not allowed to move into unless occasionally for doing some pujas. This was a part of each village and in each temple there will be sacred tree. There are a lot of trees will be there, but some of them are being worshipped. For example, like uh, if you look at the Gaya, uh, Mahabodhi tree is considered because the Lord God Buddha illumination here. And similarly, uh, if you look at uh, Stala Briksha, the most of temple have at least one sacred temple as I told earlier. And uh, people always feel uh, very good to have meditation under the tree. And very important thing I would like to talk about like in summer, in Odisha there is a Bisup Sankranti in which the water pitcher is being placed on the top of a Tulsi plants because to protect it from scorching sun. So that the water will be dripped from that uh, dripped over from this uh, pitcher and slowly so that it will be water uh, all the time, it should not be dried up. And this was being basically observed by this Israel people and they developed the drip uh, irrigation technology. And the drip irrigation was there in our country because people were using in some gardens and other things, but we did not uh, commercialize it and that was a very important thing. There is a lot of technology which was there and today it is being recycled to us as a big name and we are getting fascinated by that. And uh, special care for special trees are being talked about in Arthasastra and other scriptures, harming the trees planted in holy shrine, penance and groups, cremation grounds was heavily penalized because even in the cremation ground there will be also trees, today you won't find. And heavy fines for harming trees at boundaries, sanctuaries and also to prominent trees were given so that people will not dare to do that. The law and order is very important. So, uh, if you look at uh, Tulsi people, Batabrikshirs have great importance in Indian culture and also in Vedic literature, it is going on from that time and uh, it was also prohibited to cut Batabrikya because the gods live in this tree and no disease where this tree is situated and this is being talked about in Athar Beda. And beside this in Bhagavad Gita also says Aswatha Sarva Brukhyanam, that means among all the trees Aswatha is the best uh, tree was to be. And it is uh, nowadays uh, people, some of the uh, people are thinking that the people and Batabriksha consume more carbon dioxide from the air and give us more oxygen that the balance the, in the air uh, is make maintained which need to be re-established decisively with more scientific data. It is not that we will just talk about it, we need to conduct experiment and prove that it is right. So, therefore, all these rituals, all these uh, things has to be re-looked at with a modern eye and uh, try to see that how it will be useful. Masya Puran says that 10 wells are equal to one step well, we will be talking about step well basically big uh, well and 10 step wells are equal to the one pond and 10 ponds are equal to one child, 10 children are equal to one tree. So, therefore, the importance of tree is being emphasized in this Puranas. So, also the water bodies. So, uh, in some marriages, of course, some parts of the country, bride carries few sampling and animals to the bridegroom's house. I remember my wife had brought three trees, one is uh, banana, other is uh, mango and other tree is basically about Tulsi. So, that was the trees which were the rituals and even like at the time both of us had planted those things on our backyards and uh, people plant 
trees and occasional child birth in some parts of the India, which is of course uh, not being followed because a lot of new rituals are coming, birthday party, and then we are forgetting these our rituals. And Bel, Rudraksha, and Bar are considered dear to the Lord Shiva because he, some of the things are being always attached to some god, and Sala and people to Lord Vishnu, Kadamba to Lord Krishna, Mango to Lord Hanuman, Asako to Kamadeva, Seal Katan to the goddess Lakshmi, Coconut or Seafala to Baruna, the Lord of Waters to many other gods and goddesses. I will be also talking about that, that it is really being integrated with the belief system, so that people will be taking care of the trees. So, that was a very important thing what we need to look at it, because uh, that was the part of it. Let me talk about the Bhamana Purana, which uh, says that how it was being basically that all these plants and then trees are connected to uh, be certain gods, like it is connected how it was being evolved. And uh, of course, it may be looks to be little mythological in nature or maybe kind of thing, but if you look at the realm why it has been done is really very great. Lotus is from Vishnu's navel and Kadamba from the four part of the hand of Kandaripa and Banyan that is the ficus galenesis from Manivadra, the chief of Yakshas and Datura is being uh, evolved from the chest of Shiva and uh, Khadira from the middle body of Brahma and breadfruit is generated from the body of Vishwabarman. Karchi flowers is being generated from the palm of Parvati and Sindhu Briksha from the temple of Ganesha, Palasha is from the right side of Yama, Udambara is from the north south side of Yama, Bambo is from Skanda, Skanda is basically son of Siv, Lord Siva, and Aswastha is from Ravi, and Sami is from Katayini, Bilva is from Lakshmi, and Reeds from the Lord of Serpents and Durva is from Basuki. So, if you look at like a uh, uh, lot of plants, lot of trees are uh, the other kind of things are connected to certain gods. And they are also uh, basically being uh, considered as uh, important, because gods were considered to be important, uh, particularly in earlier days. Today, we do not believe some of them but which is very important for sustaining a peaceful life, because according to me in modern days, God is much important than what it was earlier, because we are having lot of worries and lot of tensions, lot of other things. So, it is uh, very important to have such kind of faith. Let me just talked about that how it is not that they have connected with the rituals, how it will be followed and practice in day to day life is being basically. Uh, talked about integrating or developing or uh, invoking the festivals. Because uh, uh, if you look at there are several rituals uh, were being celebrated earlier days and uh, some of them I am just trying to jot it down, uh, so that how these trees and then worshipping of trees and other things are integrated with the life through the rituals. Unfortunately, today the rituals are being replaced with the western rituals like uh, birthday party and then uh, marriage anniversary party, all their parties, Valentine day and lot of things. But however, it is not related to the environment, not related to the life, it is artificial just to propitiate the market forces, so that they can make business. But our ancestors had also used similar techniques or I can say the methodologies to integrate the reverence and uh, for the environment and also to protect the environment through the rituals. Let us talk about Aula Ekadasi, which is uh, being celebrated on the 11th day of the Falguna Sukla, 
a lot of people may not be knowing this month because all of our uh, are aware of English month. And uh, what is being done is that you will have to take bath with water soaked in amla in this fruit and which is good for health because at that time the amla comes up and then you will have to eat it and it is having a lot of resisting power or sipping it and or sip of the Radha Krishna's of course, this is connected with the religions or you know some rituals. But all are these are good for health and Amra Puspa and uh, Bhaskana Brata and in this first day of Chaitya Sukla where the mangoes will be coming up and uh, it is very important to eat mangoes because of to avoid the sunstroke. And that is being ritual is being that eating of mango blossoms and worship of Kamadeva there is a also if you go to Ayurveda, the pitta will be increasing, so we will have to decrease that. So, these are all integrated the rituals with the life, with the season, with that thing, that is the important point you should see. Asoka Pratipada, first day of Chaita Sukla, the only women worship the tree, they also observe the fast seeking longevity of their husbands and other their family members. Bakula Amavasya, bakula flowers are offered to men and seeking their blessings and when you say that it is also a part of their medicinal values. Bata Savitri Brata, Jesta Purnima De, the married woman worship the burger tree that is basically butter bruksha by circumvaluting and tying with the sacred protective threads Rakshat Sutra, listening to a sacred Savitri Sattavan story. And this is about basically have a good relationship between them, not that quarreling the way the woman is quarreling with man, so also vice versa. So, to have a bond in the family, they do that and also I guess there might be something with this tree which will be uh, important for our life. Those kind of investigation is required from the Ayurvedic point of view, not and also you can prove with the scientific. So, Bilvatriyatri Brata. On Tuesday of Jesta Purnima, when the uh, constellation is Jesta, worship a bell tree for three conjugative nights as per the Hemadhi injunction in the Skanda Purana. So, uh, one has to also look at like what is the implication of this and then people will be having this all these fastings are being done to control over their sense organs, which is very important for uh, having a good life. And uh, Shavana Krishna Ekadasi, in this uh, the ceremonial offering water to the bell tree is being done because bell is very important for the health and then it is uh, very good for stomach. And uh, similarly, Vilva uh, Nimantana, Ashwini Shukla Sasti, summoning the tree goddess and worshipping the Devi. Of course, these are all being, uh, being incorporated so that people will take care of uh, Bilva tree. And Bilva Saptami. Avina Sukla Saptami, a twig of bell bearing two fruits is offered to Devi so that people can take, maybe people starting taking bill leaves and other things for their uh, uh, health, for this thing. And uh, Kadali Bhatta, which is uh, Baisaka in the Maga of Kartika Sukla, Chaturdesi, banana tree is being planted, nurtured till it bear fruit. If you look at that, that these trees will be growing at that time. So, that is a also implicated when you will have to plant, where not to plant all those things are related. So, this is all part of these rituals are basically part of life. Kevadati is Bhadda Sukla Tritiya soliciting unbroken married life, women offer Kevada leaves to the Lord Siva and uh, this again to integrate and also to have a good married life because married life is very important for sustaining the uh, fruitful life and peaceful life. Sitala Puja in which uh, basically it is for the neem uh, tree that is uh, Chaitra Navaratras, goddess Sitala who is said to be reside in the neem tree is prohibited ritually, propitiated ritually. The part Goshai festival in the Bengal means neem tree worship, in various places different names will be there. Neem slave eaten on Baishaka Sukla Saptami because neem is good for health and you should not eat neem all the time, there is some re period in, during which you should reach that will be beneficial for your health. So, I will conclude uh, this lecture by uh, making some few remarks that we have seen how that to protect the trees and then rivers and then other things are a part and parcel of our culture. 
So, therefore, we need to look at Indian consciousness as always respected or see majesty of mother nature from time immemorial. So, it is much before than the Vedic period according to me, even much before uh, the Indus Valley civilization or Indus Saraswati civilization. With advancement of modern market manipulative science and technologies, common people became enemies of mother nature along with the government, along with the all people became enemies of the mother nature and that is the thing what we are doing. And we are saying we are civilized, we became uncivilized not taking care of the mother nature. We need to look at our old rituals reinforced with rational thinking and interpretation while integrating the environment consciousness in day to day life, not celebrating the world environment day. See, if you look at world environment being celebrated since 1972, but what has happened? The environment is getting deteriorated, spoiled day by day. So, that should be in part of our life and modern man should take shelters in the abode of mother nature while integrating lifestyle in a harmony with mother nature. So, also that developing technology so that it should not spoil the mother nature. So, with this I will uh, stop over here. Thank you very much for listening and in the next lecture we will be discussing about the environment uh, policies in the ancient India. Thank you very much. Thank you.